Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We want to thank God in this hour. We want to welcome you into the broadcast. Amen. We thank God today. We thank God today. We want to welcome you into the broadcast. I'm a part of Missionary Baptist Church. Amen. God is still in the blessing business. He's still honoring and he's still touching lives. Amen. And so we, go, we want to give God the glory and honor that he's due. Amen. And so we praise God and we pray that we thank God for putting on your heart to tune in. I'm a part. I pray that you enjoy uh, the broadcast with social distancing. And so we thank you, God. And so also you catch us at uh, WLOK.com. Amen. Uh, in, your, in your local area. Or also you can go online and, and listen or you can tune into your radio at um, 1340 AM. Amen. Or you can also go to um, 
just what he said he would do. He's gonna fulfill. He's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you. myself and I, I know he will. Yeah. Yeah. 
Come on and give God a hand of praise. Time. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. What are you doing for you? Yeah. Come on and give God the glory. give God a hand of praise. Come on and give him God a hand of praise. It's always wonderful to have the one and Devin to visit home. Amen. Come through the house of God. Amen. Come on and give God a hand of praise one more time. God wants to heal you. Everywhere you hurt, everywhere you hurt, God will see you through and take the pain away. God shall supply for you each and every day. Just lift your hands and say, Lord, I need you. I need you right away. God wants to heal you. Everywhere you hurt. Everywhere you hurt. God We'll see you through and take the pain away. God shall supply for you each and every day. Just lift your hands and say, Lord, I need you. I need you right away. God wants to heal you. Yes, he does. Yeah. Everywhere you turn. Everywhere you turn. God will bring you through and take the pain away. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you, God, for this journey. And I know I'm not worthy, God, to be upon this place today. But God, based on your grace and your mercy, God, you still see past all of my faults and failures. And supply my every need. God, I thank you, God, in this hour, God, as we stand, I pray that you'll give me strength, God. Give me what I need, God, to minister your holy and divine word, God. Give me what I need, God, to speak to your people, God, to speak to their issues and speak to their hearts, speak to their minds, God. Speak to them, God, right now in the name of Jesus. And Father, I pray, God, that as poor him decreases, I pray that you'll increase. I pray that the atmosphere has been set, God. That hearts are ready, minds are open, God, and the spirit is receptive right now, God, to, to just labor, God, a, a word from you, God, and to the, the, the facility, God, the people, God, that are gathered, God, and they didn't come to see Parham, God, but they come to see you. And so, God, right now, I pray that you'll touch in a mighty and magnificent way. Let your spirit move, God, in this house today. 
Give us strength, God. Give us passing power. God, I pray that you preach to us, preach through us, and then preach. And I pray, God, as Parham stands, I, I pray that you'll stand up, God, in my, my steep. And I pray, God, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, my strength and my divine redeemer. This we ask right now in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Will the children of God say amen? Amen. And amen again. Certainly it's a blessing always to be able to stand before the body believers. Here and I am apart. Hallelujah. Will the men of God stand with me, the deacons of this house? We're going to St. Matthew, the 14th chapter, and the 28th verse, 14 and 28, amen, 14 and 28, will the deacons come and stand, amen. Amen. And as we read from the word of God, amen, Matthew 14 and 28. And the Bible says, and Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship. He walked on the water to go to Jesus. And when he had saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid, beginning to sink. And he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand. And called him and said unto him, O thou little faith, wherefore biddest thou doubt? When God give us strength, we want to use for a fault, focusing on finishing. Focus on finishing. Focus on finishing. How many understand that focus will benefit you uh -huh. by allowing you to finish strong in every area of your life? Uh -huh. How do I stay focused then, preacher, when things around me seem to be going so crazy? When I hear gun violence on the TV, when I hear the presidential elections are going so wild and crazy, well, I understand that violence is hitting the streets and sometimes the coronavirus, is, it looks like it's, it's taking over in America. How can I stay focused when things in my life are going so crazy? The word of God teaches us how to stay focused and how to guard yourself from the pitfalls that hinders your focus. And it encourages us how to be fruitful and productive while we're staying focused for Christ on this journey. Being truthful about the matter. Many of us don't accomplish what we set aside to do. For our Lord and our maker, for our God. Because we suffer from a loss of focus in our lives. And I'm going to church, Pastor. I'm going to church Sunday after Sunday. But it doesn't look like. It's working out on my life. I find myself dealing with one thing. And if it ain't one thing, it's another thing. And it looks like every time I turn around, I face with another problem. And, and many times, Pastor, I lose my focus. Every time I get ready to go and pray, to read the Bible, look like something always getting away. 
The more I pray, the more trouble seems like it's come. Looks like my day, I set a time, a tired of time to be able to read my Bible. It looks like my day gets so busy, time flies and I don't know where it's going. And it causes me to lose focus. Many of us in here, we have a desire to do more in life for God. But yet we have some focus issues. If we move into the thing, that we move into the text, I want to give you some factors that will help you keep your focus and your eyes fixed on Jesus. And how many understand that when you have your eyes fixed on Jesus, that God will make you more than an overcomer? Is there anybody believing that God can make an overcomer more than a conqueror in this powerful name? How many know at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess there's something about his name? And as we start venturing through the text, we understand the first thing we see, we see the Messiah. We see the Messiah. You know who he is. Do you know who he is? Jesus the Christ. We find Jesus. Who is Jesus? Jesus, the one who is feeding the 5,000 with five loaves of bread and two fishes. Jesus is in the Sea of Galilee while his disciples are headed to Capernaum. They have made it a great distance into the sea and then all of a sudden the storm shows up. Don't it look like every time you're trying to move for God the storms will show up in your life? They're on their travels trying to do some great things. The storm came so violent that in despite all of their efforts and despite of everything that they were going through, they lost control of the boat. The storm had driven them nearly four miles out of the very midst of the sea. And it was on the point that they was at the fourth watch of the night, between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. And Jesus showed up. And shows out for the, his disciples. He shows up walking on water. Disciples are terrified. Yeah. Why are they terrified? So he, he able to give them strength and courage in the midst of the storm. They're terrified because they don't know who's coming at them. They think that it's a hank and they think that it's a ghost. Why? God will understand. He, he walks on water. He's showing us. That not only that he is divine as God, but he also human as man. He's showing us his divinity. That he is the son of God. He's worthy of our focus. Jesus says to them, take heart. It is I. Do not be afraid. We got to learn how to overcome your fear with faith in Christ. Mm -hmm. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you're struggling with, you can overcome your fear with faith in Christ. Not only you understand who the Messiah is, but you got to understand that there's some time you will have to deal with some moments in your life. Right. And we got to learn how to take advantage of every moment. What you mean, preacher? Because Jesus is walking on the water, we hear old Big Mouth Peter. Huh. As he said, and he reveals himself, Big Mouth Peter said, you know me. And you know Peter, we know Peter. The one who said, Lord, I will deny, I will not deny you. Uh -huh. I'll be there by your side. But yet he denied Jesus three times. Yeah. And I understand Big Mouth Peter. But yet the same Big Mouth Peter said, you are the son of the living God. Jesus said, flesh and blood has not revealed it unto you. But my father which is in heaven. I'm talking about Peter. Is there anybody in there understand who the Peter is? Peter began to rebuke Jesus. Concerning his death. The same Peter Jesus had to say, get thee behind me, Satan. Peter who cuts a man's ear off. And Jesus had to heal the soldier's ear. We see Peter consistently lose his focus on the mission of Christ. And yet we hear Peter saying, Lord, if it be you, command me to come to you on this water. He said, come. When Jesus, when you hear the voice of the Lord, you got to be willing to step out on faith. How many understand that when you walk by faith and not by sight, you can see miracles take place in your life. And then Peter, he comes out of the boat, comes out of his comfort zone. And if you're going to do some great things for God, you got to learn how to come out of your comfort zone. And Peter gets out the boat and he begins to walk on water and he came toward Jesus. 
Have you ever asked God to do something miraculous over your life? And when he opened the doors for you, you don't have time to wait on it. You got to say, God, give me strength to move when you say move. You got to learn how to make the most out of every moment. You can't bargain with God. When God says it's time to go, it's time to go. And I thank God today that God knows how to give you another chance. He, how many know that God is a God of another chance? Uh, better yet, let me say it this way. He's a God of a sudden, uh, another chance because I know I messed my second chance up a long time ago. You know how we do it? God, if you give me another opportunity, give me another moment. Lord, if you rescue me, if you rescue me out of this thing, I guarantee you I won't do it again. I learn how to do better for you, Lord. If you just get me out of this situation, Lord, heal my body. I tell you what, if you just heal my body, I'll serve you great. And many of us, once we get our body healed, we say, God, I ain't got time. But I thank God that God, no matter how much he still loves us in spite of and you got to learn as men and women of God, we got to learn how to maximize the moments and the opportunities that God has given us so we learn how to stay focused in his word. Look at somebody said, make the most out of every moment. It's your moment for a reason. And many times we mess up because we miss out on the opportunities that God has given us. And so we understand that not only we see the Messiah, he shows up in the midst of that storm. But then we also see the moment come out and do something great. How many know that God can do some great things with your life if you just put your hands in God's unchanging hand? And then as we look at the moment, we also turn and we see the miracle. When Peter steps out of the boat, he began to walk with Jesus. Because he's walking on the word of God. How many know that God, word of God will always be your stabilizer in this life? Heaven and earth shall pass away, but his word will stand. And that ought to be the goal of each and every one of us to walk like Jesus. In spite of the world that we live in, we still need to live according to his word. What is the miracle? What was the miracle, preacher? Peter, the ordinary, was able to do the extraordinary by walking on water. He walks on the thing that should have drowned him. He's in a place, in a, a position that he should not be. His hater would say, you're not qualified to be here. You, you're not able to do this. I understand that sometimes you can't go with what folks say. You got to go with what God says. Because he was focused on the word of God. Because he was focused on Jesus. He was able to be a miracle for the other. God will put you in places that your education can't get you. God will put you in some places where your talent can't keep you. God will put you in a places that you know you weren't qualified for. He'll put you in positions on your job when there are other people that should have took your place. But thank God what God has for me, it is for me. And what God has for you, it is for you. And can't no devil in hell take for God has given unto you. You got to learn how to finish this thing with excellence. Yes, sir. And the only way you can finish this thing with excellence, you got to learn how to walk with Christ in your life. Jesus asked the question to Peter, why do you doubt me? You got to learn how to focus on what Christ can make happen for you. What's impossible with man is always possible with God. Yes, sir. But then we see something else as we look at the miracle. In the midst of the miracle, we find a misfortune. A misplaced focus. Peter has a problem walking on water. The wind got boisterous and got in his eyesight. The storm got strong. He started looking at the wrong stuff. How many is a dangerous thing to let your eyes look upon the wrong thing? How many understand that there's a danger in what you're looking at? And so he loses his focus. He takes his eyes off Jesus. 
He started looking at everything else except for Jesus. He started looking at his bills. He, he started looking at his health situation. He started looking at his neighbor's problem. He, he started looking at everything else instead of having his eyes focused on the Lord. If you're going to be a disciple for Christ, a follower for Christ, you have to discipline in your focus to him. I'm going to say that when you follow him, you can finish the thing. Because of what he saw, he lost focus and he began to sink. So he falls. He, he did not take advantage of the miracle that God is placing in our life. How many know that God that opened some doors that you done shut in your face? And because he's not trusting God. He's not trusting the favor of God that, that's placed over his life. He loses his focus and he begins to sink. And anytime you take your eyes off Jesus, you begin to sink into a helpless position. You lose focus on who Christ is. And every time you lose focus on who he is, he will take you down. That's why we have to operate, my brothers and sisters. That's why we have to operate in focus for God. How you do that by him? By reading his word. Through prayer and meditation on his word. By speaking the word of God over your life and over the situation and over the moments of weakness that comes in your life. So we can avoid the misfortune that caused us to squander the favor of God over our life and seek into failure. Peter, just like many of us, when God asked us to do it, we didn't ask God to do some great thing because it don't come the way we want it to come. It don't look like the way we want it to look. We come on and cast it off. But how many of you got to learn how to trust God on this journey? I thank God that even though he's sinking, I understand failure is not found. There ain't nobody trusting God that even though I may have made some failures, I'm not a failure because failure is not final in my life. Discipline allow you to finish this thing. Mm -hmm. Then only understand that as he, sung, he began to sing, we see the misfortune of Peter because he lost focus in Jesus. But then we see the mercy. Yes, yes. Thank God for his grace and mercy. There ain't nobody thanking God today for grace and mercy over your life. He begins to sink in the moment of his favor Hallelujah. because he loses focus. But I thank God that any time you get to the point that you're at your lowest, I thank God that I can look up and live. I know how to call on the name of Jesus. Does anybody know how to call on the name of Jesus in a time of trouble? How do I understand that he inhabits the praises of his people? He's a present help in the time of trouble. That means that when you start falling, God knows how to step in and pick you back up again. Is there anybody can say Hallelujah. So I look at the scriptures. Thank you. And he comes to himself, Peter, in a sinking. Yeah. He comes to himself. He's sinking, the water's rising, he's going down, and he can't help himself. Have you ever been in a helpless situation? Yeah. When you try to call on your neighbor, you try to call on your friends, you try to call on your co workers, you even try to call on your bank account, but there's no bailout plan in sight. But how me understand that you can call on the name of Jesus? Cause of God's grace and mercy. He's able to call on this Savior, Jesus. And any time we can call on him, you can look to the hill for which cometh your help. Knowing only your help, it comes from the Lord. And he cried out. He didn't have no long prayer. You don't have to have a long prayer in a time of trouble. He cried out, Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, save me. Does anybody want the Lord to save you? Jesus, he steps in. How many of that prayer still works? He said, Lord, save me. And prayer brought Jesus' hand down to hold him. How many know that God can pick you back up again? He can reach way down, no matter how low you sink it. He can reach way down and pull you back up again. If they know how to hold it on to God's unchanging hand, if you hold on to his hand, he will never let you go. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Somebody say, mercy. mercy. Thank God for his grace and mercy you, that has brought me this far. Look at somebody and say, learn from your mistakes. God will pick you back up again.
But you got to learn how to focus on your finishing. Three pillar points and I'm out. Number one, don't focus on your feelings. But focus on your finish. And so many times we get, we get messed up because we get in our feelings. The F-E-E-L-I-N-G. But how many saying that God wants us to operate in a feeling? The F-I-L-L-I-N-G. You got to learn in the midst of it all, in the midst of your struggle, in the midst of your hard time. Learn to operate with the feeling of the Spirit of God over your life. Is there anybody trusting God for your breakthrough? Is there anybody believing that God can make a way out of nowhere? Big Mama said he's a bridge over troubled waters. And I thank God that he's been there. And so therefore, I can't go on my feelings. And so I, I can be real. Sometimes I don't feel like coming. Sometimes I don't feel like praying. Sometimes like I don't feel like reading the Bible. Sometimes I don't feel like witnessing. Sometimes I don't feel like loving on my neighbor. Sometimes I just want to be left alone. But I thank God that I can't operate on my feelings. But I got to operate on the spirit of God. So therefore, I don't. Focus on your feeling. But learn how to focus on your finish. And then number two, don't focus on the facts. Focus on the finish. Facts. Coronavirus is still spread. Facts. They don't have a solution. Facts. Facts. But I thank God that you can't go on the facts. You got to learn how to go on your faith. Is there anybody trusting God in this season over your life and trusting God for your healing and trusting God for your deliverance? How many understand that faith is, without faith is it impossible to please God? And so you got to put your faith over those facts. Oh, y'all, they go help me here. So we got to learn not to focus on the fact. The fact was Peter was in a, on the water, and the water should not have sustained him. But faith, y'all, they go help me here. How many understand that faith kept holding him up? And any time you keep the faith, when things are going hell and high water in your life, faith knows how to hold you up in the midst of it all. Is there anybody trusting God today that he got your best interest in mind? Is there anybody got faith? You ought to say hallelujah. And so I thank God for my faith. My faith that brought me through a whole lot of things. When I felt like giving up a thorn in the tie. I thank God for faith. Number three, don't focus on your failures. Focus on your failures. And so many times we mess up, we focus on what we've been done, what we've done, and well, how we messed up. And we get the woe as me syndrome. But how many understand the faith will get you through this thing? You got to learn how to put your failures in the rear view. What you mean, Paul? Ham? When you ride in a car, there's a reason they put the windshield big and nice and boisterous in front of you. There's a reason why they put the rear view mirror up right above it. So everything that you're trying to leave behind you ought to be in your rear view. They put the rear view up so that you don't have to look back. That you can always look forward. But you can glance up. Y'all go help me. So you understand that the windshield is showing your future. Always look forward. And every now and then, glance back at your failures. And look at how God is putting them behind you. Is there anything about it thanking God today that he's putting it behind you? You got to learn how to put it behind you. Look at somebody and say, put it behind you. Don't you let your failures cause you to lose focus on your finish. And then you got to learn to understand and focus on Jesus' word of God. Over your life with your strength to finish strong and overcome every fear that you may come up against. Peter has to learn that you trust God in spite of no matter what it looks like, we still trust God in spite of it. Let anybody trust in God in spite of over your life. Yes, sir. And so I have a little word, focus. My feet are word, it is focus. My little word, focus. I see today, there's an F. 
Death lets me understand that if I stay focused on God, then I will be fruitful. Is there anybody here want to be fruitful for the kingdom of God? So I leave the air focus. I see the there is failure is an F. The F lets me know that if I faith focus on Jesus, I can face adversity. If there anybody know that God will give you strength to face every adversity that you may come across in your life. Well, little air focus, I see the there is failure is an O. The O lets me know that God, through your focus, will allow you to overcome every obstacle in your life. Is there anybody here trusting God to help you overcome every obstacle? One well, little air focus, I see the there is failure is a C. The C lets me know that God will give me courage in the midst of it all. Is there anybody know that God will give you the courage to finish in the name of Jesus? Is there anybody in here believing that there's power in the name of Jesus? So I lead away focus. I see the way it is. There is a you. The you lets me know that if I stay focused with God, he'll give me some understanding that all things work together for the good of those who love God and who are called according to his purpose. Is there anybody in here trusting Jesus? Jesus, huh? if you trust in Jesus, huh? say in, say in, say in. When I look at the word focus, I see the is, there is an S. The S let me know if I stay focused, I can have success on this journey. Is there anybody understand that I have not seen, is have I'm not ahead, no has it entered the heart of man. The great things that God has in store for your life. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, stay focused. That neighbor didn't receive it. Look at another neighbor and say, neighbor, stay focused. Is there anybody in here? Focus on your finish uh, say yeah say yeah Shh. before I leave before I leave you here I want to tell you a little stuff I recall one night me and my dad was truck driving together and as we were truck driving together he was in the lead and I was in the back, and it's real dark, I said. And as we were traveling, he had his tail lights on. And as we were moving, we came through a storm. Is there anybody have some storms in your life? And sometimes uh, you can't uh, see your way uh, through the storms. Uh, and I started getting on the radio uh, and the CB, uh, and I don't know why, uh, but my dad and uh, his CB handle uh, was lamppost. Uh, and y'all go help me here. Uh, and my CB handle uh, was showtime. Uh, and we start communicating uh, back and forth uh, on that uh, dangerous highway uh, in the midst of the storm. Uh, and showtime uh, hollered up to lamppost. Uh, and said lampos uh, I can't see uh, no more the storm uh, is too heavy I can't see uh, no more daddy said what's my name boy I said lampos uh, he said look at the lights uh, of my tail light uh, whatever you do uh, don't stop in the midst of uh, this storm uh, you gotta learn uh, to keep going uh, in the midst of uh, your storm uh, you got to learn uh, not to put over uh, in the midst of uh, your storm uh, you got to learn uh, not to park uh, 
in the midst of your storm. I said, Daddy, I can see your headlight. I can see your tail lights. I can see all your lights. He said, that's why they call me the lampos. Come on, showtime. Come on, showtime. We kept on moving and we kept on going. And all of a sudden, the storm stopped raging. The clouds got blue because I was able to stay focused on my daddy's tail light. How many here understand that God is, that Jesus is the light of the world? And if you can stay focused on Jesus, how many know he will bring you through the storm say yeah say yeah say yeah he's able to get you through the storm you can fight this good fight of faith you can finish your cause you can keep the faith and receive the crown of life how many know that here the bible says if you keep your mind stayed on jesus that he's able is there anybody here and know he's able to keep you in perfect peace say yeah say yeah say yeah yes he ain't He's able. Come on and keep your hand together. Put your hand together. He's able to keep you in the midst of your storm. Peter understood that Jesus is able to keep you. Even when you're sinking, he can pull you back up again. Walk with the Lord. Walk with Jesus. And I get, know it gets hard sometimes. And I know it gets, sometimes you struggle. And sometimes you miss the mark. <laughs> but God says, I'm there for you. I love you. In spite of it all, I'm there. I want to work it out in your life. I want to walk beside you. I want to stand beside you. Is that the doors of the church are open? Is there anybody that don't have Jesus? This is your opportunity. Will you come and touch you and trust Jesus with your life? He's the light of the world. He'll get you through the storm. You got a dad in the heaven that cares. So you got to learn how to trust him as the doors of the church are open. Will you come in here today? You don't have to leave here the same way you came. Is there anybody trusting God? Yeah, yeah. You can trust him in the midst of your storm. You're going to trust him in the midst of your side. The doors of the church are open. Will you come? Dickens, come on down and open the doors. Come on down. Hallelujah. Pray your way through. Pray your way through. You can't give up now. You got to pray your way through my mind. Pray your way through. Pray your way through. You can't give up now. You got to pray your way through. My God. Press your way through. Press your way through. You can't give up now you got to press your way through my mind press your way through press your way through yo you can't give up now you got to press your way through you see that there's none but there's always room for the king as we stand to our feet and we get ready to get out of here today. Father, we thank you, God. 
We thank you, God, today for everything you've done and everything that you are going to do. I pray that you'll give me strength, God, and give your people strength and give your congregation believers strength. As we leave this place, God, and never from your presence, we pray, God, that you continue to work through us, God. Work over us. Strengthen our life in a mighty way. God, give us strength to carry on, to press on, to move on on this journey for you and your kingdom. We love you in spite of God. We love you in spite of the trials and the tests, the hardships and struggles that we encounter in this life. So God, I pray, God, that you'll keep us uplifted. Keep us going strong. For we give you glory and all the honor, God. Bless the saints, God. Give them strength. I pray that you'll save the sinner right now in the name of Jesus. Touch them wherever they are. Give them a strength, God, to repent and replace you in their life, God. First place in every situation, God. Save them to the othermost right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And as we leave this place and never from your presence, we give you honor and we give you glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen again.